What I was unprepared for was him stripping down to a fucking speedo. He is wearing a tiny little banana hammock, man. It is a, you can see all the bits. <laughs> it's incredible. I'm going to have to censor that. Yes, you absolutely cannot show all of it because it, you can see it all. Oh, um, I've seen everything. I've seen it all. Hello and welcome back to the 193rd episode, Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, the show we watch terrible movies. Tell if you should too. Your host, Mr. Brian Chiligo, joined once again by Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle, today <laughs> we're watching, uh, I say 90s classic, it feels very 80s, but it well, was, came out in 1990. 1990. Uh, very, very 80s. Um, but this this is a classic, because I don't know if you knew who this was directed by when you chose it, or oh, did you? Oh, I, I knew, I knew. Okay, because, <laughs> yeah, it's directed by Bruno Mattei, uh, who is a classic schlock peddler, and Claudio Fragasso, mm -hmm. who many people might know as the director of Trolls 2. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God! That's the reason I was like, <laughs> I look, I just looked at their catalog, and I was like, this, this seems interesting, and then I saw for, like, the main actor dude... Like, this was the last thing he did for, like, 20 freaking years. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't surprise me if he had maybe not the greatest experience on the set of this film. But... <laughs> he definitely got a little warm. We'll talk about... <laughs> we'll talk about that. But the film we're talking about today is 1990's... Night Killer. Night Killer. <laughs> Which, honestly, the, the whole, like, mask and everything feels like a Lloyd Kaufman type. Thing. A little bit, yeah. Uh, it's very silly. Uh, and, we'll, and the Night Killer doesn't really, because he kills people at and all the, times yeah. of the day. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not at all. He's just an e equal an, opportunity killer. Yes. Uh, most, I would argue, I think most of the kills happen during the daytime, I think. At least several of them do. But, yeah. Uh, so, um, I, this movie we watched, it's on YouTube. I assume it's a legal copy. It looked like mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Um, opens For second one it is like movie start we it like yes. cuts in and it is, it is people on a stage rehearsing for a recite dance with, thing with like the, clearly whatever film stock they had for this was struggling yes. even back then yes like absolutely whatever uh whatever iso they probably had like 400 800 iso film yeah. in the reel because uh, man it's not doing great yeah. <laughs> real quick pull your mic just a little yeah yeah there you go you're fine okay <laughs> it's this is like a little four far, inches right? away from it me. doesn't need to be that close but you what? it was just it was like here and it, it could just be there you know like six inches that's better in that ballpark okay. um good microphone etiquette kyle brian's an expert it's an it's important <laughs> so anyways uh opens up on uh this purple rehearsing for a dance and the dance they're doing is incredible. Music is fantastic. It is very 80s. <laughs> yes, just the worst synthy, like, <laughs> generic, like, clearly royalty-free music that they could get or whatever. Um, but uh, then we're introduced to this blonde lady. I don't know if we ever know her name. Melody? No, I, I can't remember. Samson, I don't know. But she shows up. She's late. She's running yeah, late. How dare she? And so she's got, she gets dressed down by the director. But then she's got to run back and change mm -hmm. to get ready. And in order to go to the changing room, she has to walk four miles through this. Like, she goes backstage and yes. then up some stairs and around. A, like, she goes on a trek to get to the changing rooms in this in this theater. Uh, and she gets there and it's like, well, she's definitely not going to get murdered. <laughs> she walks into this dark backstage almost immediately. area. immediately. Yes. Immediately. Also, almost immediately, boobs. We're three minutes yeah. in. Boobs already. It's, oh, classic indie, you know, indie trope. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, like, immediate, like, we just are exposed to the, the mask killer dude. Yes. Like, the whole thing was like, okay, so we're we not going to tease this at all or, or what? Dude, I had the exact same thing because... When you have a mask that's that ugly, yeah. And now, to be fair, that's not really the point. Isn't this character? Isn't this like creature? It's not like it's supposed to be like a Michael Myers thing necessarily, because the whole twist is like who's under the mask is more important than the mask itself. Mm -hmm. But it's, he's got like these big clawed hands and this mask, and it looks terrible. And like your to your point, if you're gonna do that. Have them stay in the shadows and like we see like the claws a little bit and stuff and like some of the like shapes of the mask, but we don't just full on. No, immediately it's just like blast it with light. We get a yeah. full shot of the and we're like, oh, okay, so that's what all right, fun. 
Um, but he li- immediately just punches a hole through this woman. Right yes. through her. Like, straight up. It, what it reminded me of was a little bit was a rock and roll nightmare. With the prosthetics, is prosthetics and stuff they used in that one. Yes, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and I love the, the the glove he uses to punch through him. It's also not like so the Freddy Krueger glove is like blades and yeah. it's like scary. This is it's like foam latex no. or foam rubber and it's like floppy, but he can punch right through yeah, people. Also, spoilers: so this person is just a person. They're not supernatural. No. But, yes, <laughs> but they can absolutely punch through people's chests. Okay, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Um, but uh, the director then is upset. Uh, cut back to the stage. Director's upset. Worst improv. Oh my <laughs> god, dude! I had the same note. Clearly, the director of the film just said, "You're annoyed at him. Does do you have any dialogue for me? Just make it up." It's like a <laughs> mi- one straight minute of stammering. Yes, and struggling with a cigarette. Yes, and trying to figure out like, oh, you guys are terrible. I just, you're so bad. I I can't. Uh, I just I can't. Uh, I can't. I just. Uh, I'm got a little nervous. Uh, yes, forgive me. Uh, please. Uh, uh, just do it out of me. Do yeah. it out of me. <laughs> just like, and you're not joking. It's like a minute of that. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God. It actually kind of reminds you of a, a Neil Breen film, actually, <laughs> with some of the way that the lie, that just like kind of keep repeating the yeah. same thing <laughs> over and over again. Like, we're very well connected. Just keep the gifts, drugs, and girls coming our way. But then the director, she's so mad. She's got to go find the blonde who's mm. late, uh, still again now. Uh, after she she didn't come back from changing, so she goes to the changing room, and the monster is there, and it tries to kill her, and she just runs away, and it's like yeah. okay. <laughs> it also like oh sorry, it does slice her. Throat. Yes, well I didn't realize that because the rest of the time we will see her, she has no visible wound no. and is not bleeding at all, although yeah. she acts like <laughs> she does. So yeah, because she gets she gets away after she gets slashed. And she goes, She like all stupid people in horror movies, she runs not to where the people are. No. She runs up into the she's balcony. She's in the balcony, yeah. For some reason. And then she's trying to yell to them, but again, because uh, her throat's slashed, Yeah, she can't. gets the uh, Planet of the Apes treatment. Yes, yeah. And so she can't, but again, even though we... She, uh, there's no blood, there's no nothing, whatever, fine. And then also... When he finally catches up with her, all of a sudden she can scream because she starts screaming. I was going to say, it's the the PG-13 rating. Well, maybe not with the rest of this. No, this is not a PG-13 movie at all. Not even a little bit. Maybe I cut her into pieces and then fed her to the fish. It's enough to make my stomach turn just thinking about it. But again, uh, once he catches up to her, she does start screaming. Mm. But then at that point, he kills her, punches through her chest. And she goes over the railing and beautifully lands. Yeah. And then we cut, and that's like the cold open. Then we cut to this little kid's bedroom. And this is the weirdest opening credits yes. for this movie ever because you yeah. expect the big the big title card like she gets killed ah falls black night killer. No no what we night do we killer. Yeah exactly but instead we cut to a little girl's room and we're looking at like a bed full of stuffed animals and then it's like and the music playing is like this very peaceful serene like yes like back and then it's like night killer. <laughs> I'm like this doesn't wait, 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 hang make on. sense. I think at you all. may have. I think you may have misplaced that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so funny. Anyway, so this is where we're introduced to uh, our main character mm-hmm. and her daughter. Yes. Um, I can't remember the main character's uh, name. Is Melanie? her name Melanie? Yeah, Melanie that's what it was. I knew there was a Melanie. Clarissa is the daughter. Yes. Um, and they're getting ready, and she's you know, they're hanging out, uh, and then we see I think a news report. They go and watch the news or something. Um, and, something like that. I thought they I thought uh, they got a. a knock on the door or doorbell because in the not not a uh, richard anderson uh <laughs> what <laughs> i don't know what you're not, saying not a not richard anderson show up who's that <laughs> the sherman guy oh sherman yeah maybe does he show up now i can't remember he shows up with a with a christmas gift he's like you can't open this till christmas for the little girl yes oh that's right that's right i yeah. forgot i forgot that was seated at the beginning here yeah 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 I, I must have I must have been writing a different note and phased out there just far because I don't remember that. But yeah, he gives her the gift, and then um, we see a news report that is like, Rika Trascovich is the fourth victim of the hooded psychopath. 
she was the fourth victim of the psychopath and was repeatedly raped before being killed. And I was like, no, no, they weren't. We were there. There was no, she just punched through their chests immediately. Like that is what happened. But sure. Whatever you say. I totally get this actor's name wrong. I, I, Hang on, sorry. No, I did, got it right. He's got a fucking middle name. <laughs> Richard Dean Anderson, MacGyver. Oh, this, the, the Sherman guy he looks does like kind of look like MacGyver. If you would have said MacGyver, I would. Yeah. I don't know MacGyver's okay. the actor's name. So. Well, he's also he also was in uh, Stargate. <laughs> yes, was, yes. I just forgot. That I, again, I just don't know the okay, actor's name. Cool. We'll, okay. we'll use MacGyver. But yes, that is that is what he looked like. I just called him Scarface the whole time, be, <laughs> just because he gets because I thought it was funny. Face. He gets a scar. Yeah. He came at me with that knife of his. Son of a bitch, cut my face in half before I laid my hands on him. Um, but again, uh, so we find out there's a, a psychopath on the loose who's murdering people, supposedly uh, uh, sexually assaulting them, even though, again, we did not see. We very clearly saw that did not happen to the mm-hmm. victims, even though the news said it did. Um, then. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like they were literally a hole punched through them. Yes. But. They were assaulted first. No, like well, again, no, we saw no. the scene. <laughs> we yeah, were she, there. She literally had her entire torso caved in. Yes, and nothing happened before that. Like he walked in and immediately, like never, it's just, it's, it's silly. Um, then uh, the, the interaction with him, she gets a present, blah, blah blah. Then Melanie gets a phone call, and there's some background here that I don't know if the movie ever does a good job of explaining that her husband is gone. Yes. They're, right, they're strange. The, um, it was there was something with the the MacGyver character as they're taking the little girl away, uh, which hasn't happened yet. Y- yet, but, but like yeah. she, he refers to her deadbeat husband, uh, who used to be a cop. Yeah, he was her ex cop husband. Yeah, should be doing something right now. R- right, right. Her father was a cop before he got booted off the force. So then she gets a call from somebody, and I'm not even sure who it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the husband, I guess. Maybe it's the ex-husband. Because she gets this phone call and she has this great, uh, just a great performance where she's like, listen, I don't have anything to say to you except don't call me anymore. Listen, I don't have anything to say to you except don't call me anymore. (laughs) And then the guy's like, Melody. Uh, It's incredible stuff. Melody. Melody. Then. She walks, she gets, hangs up the phone, walks over to a mirror and just starts groping herself. Yep. For some reason. Brian. <laughs> trope. What? Kyle, what? It doesn't matter how we get there. <laughs> she just takes her top off and is like, yes. And I'm like, what is, and I love, then she starts expositing while groping herself. She's like, you have a daughter. You have a marriage on the rocks. And... You have a daughter and a marriage on the rocks. And I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> and then the phone rings again and she answers the phone topless. And I'm like, this is the weirdest. Is that, is that, is that the director's kink? He's like, I, 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 need, I need family life, but make it sexy. <laughs> it's got to be. He's like, look, nobody cares about the background. Let's just have her be topless while she's explaining her backstory, <laughs> I guess. It's so stupid. But she answers the phone, mm-hmm. and it's this is where the creepy voice guy comes in. He's like, hello, Rick. Stay just like that. Oh, yeah. And she's like, oh, no, no. no. Um, yeah, she gets that, and she gets freaked out, and she sees somebody across the street. Who she thinks is yeah. messing with Because he says, like, I can see you. Don't move. Uh, you're so hot. That mm-hmm. kind of thing. So then she calls the cops. And I love, she calls the cops and, and he's like, oh, okay. Lock yourself in the house and don't open the door for anyone. I'll call you back in five minutes. Exactly. So there's somebody being weird. I'll call you back in five minutes. Not I'll send somebody. Yeah. Not I'll, just, I'll call you back in five minutes. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of like procedures back then before communication it was. It seems crazy to me it, that it you would is. be like, I'll call you back in five minutes and not just like, yeah, we got somebody coming over also, or something. Also, it does kind of make sense that the call is coming from inside the house because Well, that's the thing. That's has, the whole reason. She has two lines. That's the whole reason this phone call exists is so that he can go, uh, and the whole reason he says I'll call you back mm-hmm. is to set this up and make it make sense. So she goes, oh, 
and for no reason tells him, he goes, what's your number? She goes, oh, well, I have two phone lines. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And she's mm. like, here's both of Which them. I think she's an author, right? I, do, I didn't know that no, was she's ever. on a typewriter. Sure. At some oh, point. yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe. Um, but she gives him both phone numbers out loud, which, again, she just does to so that the serial killer can hear the phone number. <laughs> he then she then hangs it up. He's like, all right, I'll call you back in five minutes. But you said you would call me back in five minutes. I can't wait five minutes. And then the phone rings like four minutes later after she is and she has locked the door at this point, which is important. She's locked the door and like yeah. put, the, put the keys away or the keys have gotten taken. We, we saw the keys kind of get grabbed by somebody. And then the phone rings like four minutes later and she picks it up. She's like, you told me it would be five minutes. And he's like, and it's the killer. And he's like, hello, I'm inside your house. Uh. And it, the whole reason all this exists and the whole nonsense with the two phone lines is so that he can call from the other phone line from inside the house because cell phones don't exist yes. yet. And so you have to have a contrivance for how he can call from inside the house. Coming from inside the house. You hear me? It's coming from inside the house. It's amazing. It, it, it also would only, I guess it would make sense that, her being like an author that she would have like right. a business line oh, yeah. and a home line. I'm not saying it's outlandish for a person to have two yeah. phone lines. We had two phone lines when I was growing up before cell phones. I just think it's funny that she go through this whole rigmarole of explaining it out loud mm. just so that when he calls from inside the house, the audience is like, oh, because she has a second phone line because otherwise that wouldn't work and it wouldn't yeah, make any it's, sense. <laughs> it's pretty dumb. Um, but anyways, uh, also her phone has the most insane phone ringer that I've yeah, ever heard. It sounds like a small Lord. animal or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like... <laughs> it's like the weirdest yeah. phone ringer I've ever heard. <laughs> it's wild. The 80s were a weird time. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, oh, that's because when she answers the phone, she's like, I told you, uh, you told me it would be five minutes. And he's like, I can't wait five minutes, Mrs. Beck. I'm too horny. <laughs> I'm too horny. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, anyways, oh. so then uh, he, she tries to escape, but she can't because she's locked. She locked herself in, which is what the cop told her to yeah. do. Um, and this is again why deadbolts in houses don't have a key part on the inside. It's normally like a handle you can just mm. turn, so you can get out even without keys. <laughs> you don't yes. have to have keys to get out of uh, your own house. Man, it's, yeah. I also think they intentionally changed that. Because if you notice, every time she uses the lock, it wiggles around. So I think they oh. just installed that for the film, <laughs> I nice, think, nice. is what's going on. Yes, we there. need your deadbolt to be from like the 1960s. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyways, uh, so then the, the hilarious thing, so she's running around, she's trying to get away. And then the phone rings again, and it's the police. Yes. And she picks up the phone. And he's pretending to be the husband? Yes, the killer also has the phone, is pretending to be the husband. And he's like, oh, sorry, I just got home. She she got spooked, but it's fine. I'll take care of it. And the cop's like, okay. And she just listens to this. Why aren't you like, no, 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 no that's no. the killer. Yeah, that's the killer. Exactly. <laughs> You're on the phone. What are you doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> she just doesn't even try to tell them. Like, no, actually, that's the murderer. Um, but then she escapes into another room where she gets a gun. Yes. She has like a revolver in a in a drawer and she gets it and she loads it and she shoots one time through the door and it's like, I must have killed him. Obviously, I yeah, very I clearly, clearly killed clearly. him. Die, you bastard! Uh, and then he's just fine. loaded one round. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But she, I thought she had a whole drawer full of bullets, but maybe not. Um, anyway, so then... Uh, he, he comes around the corner and is like, ah, you didn't get me. And then it cuts. It fades yes. out. Like, yeah, we don't we, see we, what we do. We cut the black. and We do see him take the mask off, but we, it's framed where we can't see his face. And But she, we see her look at him like, ah. We, we cut to, is it the... The hospital, the I hospital. think. Okay, yeah, yeah. And w w in which we have the... <laughs> the detective <laughs> walking talk. Not Johnny Con Conkren. <laughs> yes. The, 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 Dude, he reminds me so much of the... Uh, uh, character from Seinfeld that's based off Johnny Cochran. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jesse. Something. He does have a similar, like, talk, like, kind of like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you 10 seconds to get the fuck out of here. I'll rearrange that rat face of yours. You understand? Put the bomb on? Who told you to put the bomb on? I didn't tell you to put the bomb on. Why'd you put the bomb on? 
way that he talks a little bit, yeah. Um, but he's a detective, and he's talking to like the psychiatrist. Yeah, I think they have on board for that. Like, it, it, it's it, what it reminds me of is like we need a we need a psychic detective to track down the killer. Yeah. Well, he reminds me of the dude from Halloween. The Hall is it the Halloween movies? Um, the guy Donald is it Donald Pleasant? Well, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> Mike Myers was a patient. <laughs> right. Of his. Right. But it's like that kind. They're going for that kind of character mm -hmm. who's like this kind of eccentric old man guy who like knows the mind of the killer or whatever. Yeah. Or is like getting into the mind of the killer. Yes, she did see his face, but the trauma has completely erased it from her memory. But he's like the psychiatrist, and they're like doing a sork and walk and talk around the <laughs> around the hospital, um, and and they're like, yeah, she doesn't remember anything. It's the important thing is that that they're explaining here is that uh, Melanie does not remember anything about the attack or what happened. Like she went into a, a trauma response and yeah, wiped it all wiped, from her memory. Pushed it all out. Yeah, yeah basically. Um, so they're, they're trying to get her for an ID, to, for an ID, but yeah. since she can't remember, can't remember so anything. they're coming up with plans to kind of help bring her memory back. One of the ideas was using her, like bringing her kid in and being like, look, you, you yeah. have a daughter. Remember your daughter? And that didn't do anything. No. Like she just kind of looks at her like, I don't know. And know. then they hint to, well, we're going to go, we, we always have the more drastic backup option. Uh, if that doesn't work, let's just go ahead with the emergency plan. No. No, no, no. That's sheer madness. See, I missed that line, and so the fact of what happens at the rest of this movie <laughs> was, like, the most insane thing that had ever oh, occurred. Good. I didn't even know there was a hint at what they were going to do, but that's I incredible. didn't know what they were going to do, because who would ever think about doing <laughs> the this? The most insane premise or, like, a possible idea that they could come up with? Yeah. Um, but she doesn't recognize her daughter anymore, so that, that when she gets home at, from the hospital, they, get, they decide that the daughter needs to go stay with these friends. Um, and that's where Sherman shows up mm. and uh, with his wife and they're going to like take in uh, the daughter while Melanie's like kind of out of it and not, you know, not all there and yeah. that sort of thing. Um, and oh, as and soon as mine, this kid has like no relation to like Sherman. No, or the wife or anything. they're just like, friends. I think literally right? friends. Yeah. yeah. We've been the best friends for the past six years and we always tried to do favors for them whenever we could. Yeah, literally. Um, and as soon as Sherman walks in and you see that scar on his face, I was like, like oh, he's oh, the killer. okay, he's the killer. Yeah, it was like his immediate thought was like, that. well, he's the fucking killer. Like, obviously, and yeah. it's, yeah. Uh, the, the claim was, though, he got slashed while the guy was, like, trying to leave. Yeah, I, somehow he, Some I didn't, yeah, he, story. like, he showed up or something and somehow got, yeah, he got attacked in the middle of the, whatever. I'm the guy who saved her. Filthy animal left this little scratch for me to remember him by. We'll find out later that that is obviously not what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, as soon as you see him, you're like, well, that guy's the fucking, that's clearly the murderer. <laughs> um, then the most insane, th and again, when you don't know what is happening in this movie, this is the most ridiculous contrivance <laughs> ever. She leaves to go somewhere and she's driving in her car down the highway. Does, does she discharge herself from that? Like... Well, she's she at home at this point. Okay, okay. And then she's going somewhere else. Uh, gotcha. Cause she because because she's been she the, they come and get the daughter from her home. Like she's been mm -hmm. discharged at that point. And she's driving somewhere else, like to the store or something. And as she's driving in her convertible, this guy in a Jeep he, drives yes. up drinking a beer <laughs> and like, hey, baby, uh, you yeah. wanna be you wanna be friends? <laughs> yeah, and he's like hitting on her while driving next to her, and she's like, What the fuck? Hey, sweetheart! So she drives and she gets away from him and she parks at some building. It feels like a YMCA. <laughs> yeah. And runs inside and goes into the bathroom and he follows her into the bathroom. And then when she Th gets this in, is the most it's insane. So scene. insane, Kyle. <laughs> she gets in there and she's like, and he's like, where are you at? Uh, and she pulls the gun he, on yes, him. Pulls the gun on him and then forces him to strip down and put all his clothes in the toilet. And flush it. <laughs> and he's like, what? What are you talking about? What about these? Throw them in the toilet. What? Do it! Oh and I love, there's this great line where he's like, she's like, take off your pants. And he's like, my pants? And she goes, now, or your career's over. Take off your pants. My pants? Your career's over. And I was like, your career? But what? The, everything's alluding to that she knows him. But nothing's direct. I will say that's an interesting twist when you find out later that maybe subconsciously yes. she did know what was going on. 
I mean, but she even in the goes, moment like, saying your career's over while holding a gun on a mix literally she says, no yeah, just reach into the toilet and, and grab your grab your clothes. It should be easy for you, asshole. You're full of shit yourself. Like, yeah. perfect, perfect lines for a woman who thinks she has got like a deadbeat shit husband. Shouldn't be anything new for an asshole like you. You're full of shit yourself. Yes, but again, she supposedly does not know who this person mm. is, and I did not realize what was going on also, here, Kyle, also, so it's insane. What I was unprepared for was him stripping down to a fucking speedo. He <laughs> is wearing a tiny little banana hammock, man. It is a, You can see all the bits. <laughs> it's incredible. I'm going to have to censor that. <laughs> yes, you absolutely cannot show all of it because you can see it all. Oh, um, I've seen everything. Yeah, I've seen it all. So then she leaves there and goes to the beach to kill herself and just starts drinking. She has all the beer. medication. She has every medication she has like ever. She like pill bottles on a blanket on the beach and is just drinking out of a flask and oh downing God. pills. And he follows her and <laughs> finds her. Oh, whoa, whoa. Are, are you not going to say the freaking line to talk about whatever he's leaving the building? Oh, that's oh, right. I forgot about that. It's like the that. greatest line yeah. delivery ever. I forgot. I, I do have that here. As he's leaving, the guy's like, where'd your clothes go? And he turns around. He goes, hey, bud, what happened to your clothes? I got molested in the little boy's room. I got molested in the little boy's room. I got molested the, in the little boy's room. And the what the fuck is this guy? Why? The way he delivers it is unhinged. And that's the thing. This, I was like, she has the weirdest luck. She went from one crazy psychotic serial killer to a completely different crazy yes. psychotic serial yes. killer. Yes. This, which is the premise before the twist that gets revealed. The, the the idea that you are to sit with as you're watching this movie for the first time is that she literally got attacked by a psychotic serial killer, and then as soon as she's released from the hospital, gets Runs attacked by another. a different psychotic yes. serial killer. What are the chances? <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, so she is trying to OD on the beach. Uh, in the middle of the day, uh, seemingly there's nobody around, but it's just mm. the beach like at noon. <laughs> and she's just like taking all these pills and stuff. And so he, he finds her on the beach. <laughs> Does a pill kick. Yeah. Found a very a very quick change of clothes. Good for yes. him. Yes. <laughs> uh, kill, yeah, kicks everything <laughs> off to the side and says, well, that was dumb. Now you're going to have to drink seawater to throw <laughs> yes. up all that stuff. And he like starts start drowning, drowning her in the surf. <laughs> He's like, you gotta drink water to puke it up. It's so insane. You gotta drink seawater because it throw up all that shit you've been taking. And the guy, and again, when you're watching this the first time, the guy that just tried to molest her in a bathroom is now saving her from ODing in the ocean in the middle of the yes. day. And you're I will like, say there, there's a part where on? she's like heaving and trying to throw up. Yes, and, and not. And boy, he is. His positioning with her is it's very suggestive. <laughs> well, and I love she's trying she starts like trying to like gag herself to make herself throw up, but she clearly can't. So she's just yeah. like uh, spitting out water and was stuff. The, was it was the director like, hey, can you actually throw yeah, up? Yeah, I think they were, and she like tried and then like, nah, not really. Nope. Oh god, it's so funny. It's I love he gets up to when he runs up to her, he's like, What the hell what the hell do you think you're doing? And she just goes, committing acts of kindness. Probably gonna have to bleep those over here to get demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell do you think you're doing? Committing acts of kindness. Um, anyways, uh, so then we cut away from that. He saves her. We cut away from that and we go back to the actual serial killer who is at a bar and we only see him from behind. We keep seeing this guy from behind. He's wearing a black trench coat and he's got like slicked back long hair, yeah. dark hair. And he's picking up some random girl at the bar. Yes. And he takes her back home. <laughs> And she like walks in and looks around and he's got like, it's like an art studio. That was weird. Yeah. It's like an art studio that is like, there's like clay and shit everywhere. And then his mask is there <laughs> yes. and his glove. And again, we don't see him the whole time. And they start this thing where <laughs> they start, they're talking about little red riding hood. Yeah. He puts the he, mask on and the glove. Yes. And he's like, now tell me the story of red riding. Hood. And she's like, he wants foreplay for red riding, red riding hood. This is, freaking weird but she doesn't say I'm this drunk. is weird she's like fucking hey let's go <laughs> she is into it she's like hot and she's on oh, board God. with it granny what a big ugly mug you have uh, but every time she stops he's like no keep telling the story of red riding hood what a nutcase don't stop 
Uh, and then ultimately kills her. I was hoping because he starts drowning her in like in, wax. In wax and he's putting layer after yeah, layer. Which that would have been a good kill, but he still just punches through her chest, which is so boring. I thought like yes. we were going to keep doing that and then it was going to cut and we were going to see her like completely also, encased whenever, in wax. after she's, well, we do get her Well, kind of, but it doesn't look but like what the, I, yeah. He puts an extra mask on her and gloves. Yeah, that's what I mean. It makes no sense. It's so weird. What we should have seen is he should have been drowning her in the wax and then it cuts back and yeah, she looks like a human candle and like we see her mm-hmm. face like in wax like screaming that's what it should be but instead he puts the mask on her and we don't it's just so it's they got close to doing what like they should have with that scene they just don't quite get there and it's disappointing um then we cut back to melanie who is now locked in this dude's apartment <laughs> this this crazy psychotic yes. guy's apartment um <clears throat> and then she just kind of like decides to roll with it. Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> yeah, is I guess the idea of what they're going for. At one point, she gets the gun and oh. is threatening to shoot herself. And then he's like, do it. Do it. Brian, Brian, who paid for part of this movie? I definitely, definitely wasn't Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Oh, dude, there, I I guarantee you it was not. There's no <laughs> way that Kentucky Fried Chicken saw the premise for this movie and was like, yeah, 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 yeah definitely yeah, yeah. put our, our here's, logo here's in that. $15,000. Yeah, no, 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 100% what happened was they just used it and didn't care <laughs> that it was there. Fried chicken and french fries. Oh. But yeah, that's right. He comes back with uh, with KFC, and she's threatening to shoot herself. Uh, and then she asks him to do it, and then he is going to, or no? But he says he'll, he says he's she doesn't have the courage bluff, to do it. Yeah. But he's like, I'll do it for you. And then she's like, No, don't kill me. And then he's like, But I'm gonna screw you. And then he shoots. He clicks he, it, but it's yeah. empty, and it's like blah blah blah. <laughs> and basically, he just decides. And he tells her, like, uh, look, you're going to die, but you're going to die when I choose because I am a psychotic killer and totally oh not your ex-husband who you don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we cut from that to an aquarium because we have to have the aquarium this, scene. <laughs> yes, this whole thing is pretty wild. It's just another victim for yeah. the serial killer. Um, we do, she, she does get killed, and then they're like, oh, she was hacked into pieces and fed to the fish. Maybe I cut her into pieces and then fed her to the fish. It's enough to make my stomach turn just thinking about it. I would like, okay, I can understand you not need, not having I think the time guy... to do that. But you could do like a cutaway thing of some red dye with some fish food or something like that. And them eating, like the fish eating some stuff with this red dye. That would be like non-toxic. Oh that yeah, would, that would that would give an idea of what it is. I well, I will say I don't think that's actually is that what's supposed to be what happened. The security guard happened. says that, but I thought he was like they're like taking the security guard away for questioning, mm-hmm. and I think he says like, "Oh, I would have hacked." I thought he was like saying what he would have done if he did kill her or something. I, I maybe I misinterpreted that, but there is a mention of her being hacked because we see her body come out on a stretcher mm-hmm. like in a bag and it doesn't seem like pieces it seems like a whole body I don't know who knows whatever um, but my favorite part of that scene is she's running away from this guy forever in the aquarium and then when he finally catches up to her to kill her and, and her glasses have gotten knocked off at this point and he finally mm-hmm. catches up and then we get the punch through the chest shot and when that happens her glasses yeah, are back, back on, on. Yeah. yeah, I was like oh cool that, that clearly was shot first yeah uh, then we go back to uh, the, the little uh, hotel room where Melanie's being held cost- hostage. And boy, oh boy, was it clear that they had like eight lights in that tiny little room and it is like 900 degrees in there? Yes. Because they are sweating their like, asses. Crazy. <laughs> they're sweating. They're, they're so sweaty. Um, he ties her to the bed and is like, uh, we don't really see anything here. Also, knowing, knowing that we know now, it's like, boy, this is... This is getting like it's insane. Did this guy just just? I have thoughts. We'll get we'll get that at the end. Whenever the big reveal happens, yes, it's very bad. Um, then the uh, there's this great sh- thing. We cut away and it's another news report. And I love this news report. Um, I think we're like outside the the hospital and they're like talking to the the psych, the psych, or the, the the police department they're talking to the psychiatrist mm. guy and the other detective and at one point somebody says a clinical examination of the patient revealed an inordinate amount of seminal fluid an examination revealed an inordinate amount of seminal fluid <laughs> which is an insane sentence <laughs> 
But then they say, and I guess, okay, I guess this makes sense when you find the reveal later. Mm. They say, You swallowed a whole bottle of barbiturates, and we saved her only by pure chance. She swallowed a whole bottle of barbiturates, but we saved her. And I was like, what? When did that happen? How did you save her? She got kidnapped yes. by a guy. And again, because at this point, yeah. I, you don't know. When I, when I heard that, I was like, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're Damn fine. it. <laughs> hang on. You didn't, you guys didn't do anything. It was the crazy serial, serial killer dude. Yes. And that, again, it all works in retrospect yes. once you find the twist out. But before that, it, you're like, what is happening? Well, it just makes the movie make no sense. And again, it's kind of clever once you find the twist out, but it it's is. Just, their method of getting from point A to B is the most insane. Yeah, thing and possible. it makes you feel like you're losing your mind watching a movie. And again, it's kind of effective in that regard, I guess. It's interesting, but holy cow. Uh, then we see another shot of her like playing with the gun. I think she loads a real bullet into a yes. real gun, which is yeah. don't do that. Now, it could be a dud bullet, I guess, but. It, <laughs> And then uh, she shoots a hole in the mirror. <laughs> like she shoots the mirror, mm. and the weird nerd neighbor guy who like he, I, th I think he's like the person running the, uh, the oh hotel. like the motel or whatever. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he shows up and is like, "What was that? I heard a like I heard a noise." And and uh, uh, the guy Axel is his name. We'll yeah. find out later. Uh, who's like the other serial killer looking guy shows up and tucks a single dollar bill. bill into his, yeah, he's like, yeah, he paid off. Hey, you know, one dollar. I know $1. it's the eighties, but yeah. like, come on, you know, inflation, $1? right? <laughs> yeah. And then, and again, this is where it works when you realize what the twist is. Cause he has this thing where he like, he goes inside and he confronts her and she seems like she's like remembering something and he's like shaking her. And he's like, what do you remember? Do you remember? Um, he's like, do you remember anything or whatever? Do you remember? And they'd said in the scene previous that if she remembers the face of the killer, the killer will probably murder her or something like that. Yeah. Um, but he is shaking her and being like, do you remember? And you're, and I was like, wait, but he's definitely not the night killer guy. He's a different guy. Yeah. But then again, it works out. He's trying to see if she remembers so that he can, he's like, oh, it worked. We're done with this, this shit this ruse that we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in the moment, none of it makes any sense. But no, again, it's the best. It's everything that makes this film wild and insane is all flipped on its head at the end. Yes, and it's wild, and it actually, it almost kind of works when you get to the end. You're, I mean, it's utterly insane. No, it's completely insane. But, like, the the, the parts throughout the it's movie... It's the worst strategy on the planet. Yes, yes, like, practically from... The, but, but the parts in the movie that were driving me crazy while I was watching the movie, mm. once the reveal happens, you're like... Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense because there were so many notes I had where I was like, "What? I, Why do the cops mm, know this? Why does mm, this know this?" Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and you feel like you're losing your mind while you're watching the movie, but then at the end you're like, "Oh, okay." But yeah, it's still utterly insane the actual plan they had. Now, if that doesn't work, let's just go ahead with the emergency plan. No, 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 no. That's sheer madness. Uh, then a cop shows up to investigate the 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 one guy, the one detective guy shows up at the at the motel to investigate. Uh, because they got a tip from somebody. The nerdy guy gave him a tip. Yes, and he's like, "Hey, I think there might that girl might be here." And he shows up, and and Axel like clubs him in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What?" You got guys like looking for a reward. Is like, you know, what your reward is me not beating your goddamn skull in. Yeah. Wasn't there a reward? You want a reward? I'll give you 10 seconds to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it's wild. Um, and then uh, she's able to escape. They, uh, the Axel takes her out to like make a phone call or something. This phone call is fucking wild. It's incredible. It's, it's wild, especially because when you get to the end. What? Because he's oh, working with them. Yes. Yeah. And so he's doing like a whole act, I guess. Yeah. It's It makes it's crazy. Look, you're the ones who started all this. This time the ball's in my core. Um, meanwhile, uh, the 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 Sherman is gonna go look for the murderer. Yes, he tells his wife. Murderer. He's like, I got. I'm get. He gets a gun and he's I'm like, the I'm the only other go, person who saw his face. I can get him. I'm gonna go plug him one between the eyes. I'm gonna find that murdering bastard and I'm gonna plug him one right between the eyes. And then uh, they're also the 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 his wife mentions that he used to be into Melanie. She's like, "Oh, you just want to save her because you used to." I know what's going on between you two. You guys always had something going on, kind of thing. You didn't. 
think that I didn't used to watch you. Your eyes bummed out of your head as she lay there. Also, they alluded to earlier that Sherman and his wife uh, can't have kids of their own. And oh yes, that the, the the wife goes very like dark in yes. this moment. Yes, absolutely. She's very upset. Um, mm-hmm. and I, it's all right, honey. Mommy's here. I love her performance is incredible in this whole movie. She's like, Sherman, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going out. And she's like, with a gun? It's like this big over the top. It's it's really good. Sherman, what are you doing? I'm going out. With a gun? Then, and I don't know why what, where this happens. Um, I believe, oh, th- then uh, that's what it is. Uh, the, that, that wife, uh, the, the, Clarissa is standing there watching him argue. The daughter is watching him argue. And the, she, the mom... The, the adoptive mom comes over to her and is like, oh, it's okay, honey. Why don't you go back to your room or something like that? And the girl says to her, you're not my mommy. You're not my mommy. And then that woman turns and breaks the fourth wall and yes. looks into the camera. Like her soul has been consumed by that state. And I was like, why are we breaking the fourth wall? What is it okay. happening? All right. <laughs> it's insane. Um, uh, then, uh, the, meanwhile, they're trying to trace the call. Uh, like, like you said, when the guy calls, they're trying to trace the call or something yeah. like that, even though they know who it, uh, whatever. Uh, and I love when he goes, they're like, well, and he's like, we didn't get it. The conversation was too short. The one detective is like, fuck. The conversation was too short. Fuck. <laughs> he gives one of the greatest <laughs> fuck line deliveries I've seen in a while in a movie. It's really good. Oh, good. Um, also, by the way, this is a Christmas movie. Who knew? Yeah. There are Christmas decorations <laughs> up yeah. everywhere. Um, oh, good. They're running down the street. She's able to get away. Um, and she runs away. And then Sherman finds her, like, walking down the street and grabs her. And is like, get in the car with me. And he gets her in the car. And they <laughs> peel off. And Axel's, like, running after him. Like, no. Um, and the other guy, the uh, uh, Axel is very upset that she got in the car with Sherman. Um, then he takes her back to her house. Yes. And we see for one, maybe the first time a close up, and we see his scar and it is it's awful. Bad. It's, it's a very awful. terrible and it's different in like every scene mm. in particular that we get a close up before like the reveal. And then we get another close up later. They're completely different shapes and sizes. Yes. Like they're clearly yes. filmed on different days. It's wild. And then, uh, he tells her lock the house and I'll, uh, go get, He's like, uh, he leaves her there and he's like, lock the door. I'm going to go get something. Mm. And then he leaves and he returns with the mask and blah, blah, blah. He's the killer, that sort of thing. And I was like, okay, so obviously it was Scarface. And then we get like a flashback to the first attack where it's revealed and we see him taking the mask off and that it's him and that she sliced him with a knife. And that's why he has the face scar and all this sort of stuff. I kept thinking it might have been a bigger twist because it seemed so obvious from the first minute. Now, there is a bigger twist. The bigger twist is just... The insane shit I would we'll talk about here in just a second. Um, but uh so then she she like tries to come on to him to yeah, buy time. Cajules him to yeah. get to get his knife and then stabs, stabs him in the stabs dick. <laughs> she stabs him right in the dick. She's right in the dick. Uh, butters, you don't, don't stab a guy in the dick. She does. She stabs that dude right in the dick. Actually, I guess it would be more like Sin City took away his weapon. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I take his weapons away. Both of them. Uh, it's amazing. So she stabs him in the dick, uh, and then as she's about to die, her new psychotic, sweaty boyfriend dies Bra- through, dies the, through win- the window in glorious fashion. And I cannot stress it up. Still at this point, I think this is just some random serial killer who is like in love with her. Yes, <laughs> he's got the thirty-eight, and he's he does his little roll to the chairs and just unloads. Go, 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 go. Shoots, uh, shoots Sherman like ten times in the chest, uh, and he's like, no. Um. Uh, and he totally falls over and dies. Um, and then we get the big reveal. And then we're at a press conference with yes. the detective, with the doctor, of them revealing yes. that this the, the second serial killer dude was the ex-husband the whole time, and this was a ruse to make her relive her experience. So that she would so remember. That she would remember. That's... 
That's some insane shit. It's also not even what happens. No. He doesn't remember. He served the, the actual siller, serial killer just finds her again and kidnaps her to kill her, and they follow him and then kill him. Like it's not like the funny. Funny part about it is the uh, the detective alludes to that early on, earlier on. Oh, does he? Because he's like, well, if. if, if if we let out that uh, you know she's alive and, and and knows things, maybe he'll just be more determined to come back and finish the job. That's literally like, all that happens. Yes. yes. But thanks to your TV appearance a while ago, you practically gave him the idea. That is literally <laughs> what happens, and and like like she never has to remember anything that no. in a way that matters. By the time she remembers, like he already has her. She stabs him, and then she he, the Beck shows up, and like it, it doesn't. It's so stupid. I don't know who made the suggestion of doing this of, of this. Point. You mean in the universe? Or? Of, of in the, within the universe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because it seems like it's all an excuse for this, the, this like, is he a sergeant or a lieutenant? I don't whatever? know, whatever, yeah. Uh, to be like, hey, um, I'm going to be the worst human being on the planet for the sake of the investigation. <laughs> I want to be a serial killer for a few months for the investigation? <laughs> I'm going to abuse my, my wife, wife for a few months also, for the investigation. Uh, also, when you're tracing my call, I'm going to drop it, the N-word. <laughs> yeah. Hard E-R. Oh my God, I forgot about that. I'm going to make you wish you were never born, man. Avalade. Oh my to God. my co-worker for the, for inv the investigation. <laughs> it's so unhinged. He's clearly just an awful human being <laughs> who used this all as an excuse to abuse his wife and be a massive racist to his coworker. Oh my god. Oh god. It's incredible. So yeah, and it's an interesting here's the thing I'll give this movie. It's an interesting idea. I, I was not seeing it because no. it's so fucking insane. It's so insane that you're like, wait, what? <laughs> that cannot be what the actual plot oh, of this movie god. was. And that's what it was. It was her husband, and yeah, because she couldn't remember anybody she didn't know that it was her husband uh and just thought it was a different psychotic serial killer that had kidnapped her uh then, so they congrats they did it they, yay. they yay, happy ever after so they're they're yay. kind of like kissing and, and having a nice moment as meanwhile their daughter it's, it's is christmas. opening christmas, it's christmas presents present. yeah. yay uh and the gift she got from sherman was the mask. Was his mask. I guess he had a third one. Yeah, and she puts it on, and she's like, ah, I'm back, or I don't know. She Which says I, What is this, this mask supernatural? I corrupts people who put it on? Who knows? Well, they say in like the in some point, they're like, What effect is all this going to have on her? Well, you know, I, what I'm worried about is what it'll do to, to the daughter's psyche, because, you know, she, had to, she went through a lot of trauma. I think the idea being that, like, mm -hmm. This whole situation like messed her up, so now she's gonna be a killer or whatever. <laughs> the fucking whatever, but yeah, she's got the mask freeze frame on her, credits roll. And I was what like, a you know, wild what? film, you know what? <laughs> I mean, it is something else, it is wild. Uh, absolutely good, bad, it's incredible. Bad, this is this movie is amazing, fantastic. And again, the twist I cannot stress enough is. The, one of the more unhinged twists we have ever seen in a movie like this, where it's straight up just, oh, surprise, he's he's her ex-husband. Yeah, who's just pretending doing the most insane serial. shit on the planet. Yeah, it's kind of incredible. If you don't keep up your end of it, you're dead. It's kind of incredible. Absolutely check it out. That's going to do it for this episode. As always, you can do us a favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GV or BB. Support us there. Get access to some bonus content. We're recording two new bonus short episodes today. One of them we're talking about soaping. I'm just going to leave the, it at that. The 90s were a weird time. <laughs> the 90s were a weird time. And the other one, we're looking at a uh, a grocery store training video with some of the sassiest employees <laughs> you have ever met. And it's great. Uh, so those will be our bonus episodes for the next couple of months. So look out for that over on Patreon. Uh, you can also support us by heading over to tpublic.com and search for our stuff. You can buy our merch. We got, you know, T-shirts, all that kind of good stuff. Yep. Really appreciate that. I have a podcast called This Film is Lit. We're talking about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, our most recent episode will have been, I think, still Alice in Wonderland. Um, I don't know if our next episode will be out, but no, I think it will be. By the time this is out, our next episode, our, our most recent episode will have been High Rise, which is a it's a Tom Hiddleston movie with Jeremy Irons from like 2015. It's like a thriller dystopian hmm. thing. I don't know. I knew nothing about it. I have not. We haven't watched yeah. it yet, so I don't. I don't know well, anything I think about it. But, the sounds... Yeah, it's Tom Hiddleston, Jeremy Irons, and then a couple other really interesting people. But 
Anyways, uh, I think that'll be the most recent episode when this is out. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, fucking awesome. Keep watching movies. Definitely, Definitely. go check out. Definitely Night, Night Killer. Killer. It's on YouTube. It's incredible. check it out. It's crazy. It's so good. It's just unbelievable <laughs> how insane it is. Like I literally, my jaw was on the floor the whole last like ten minutes of the movie. Like that can't be what is happening. <laughs> it is. That's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs>